City on this and so many other issues. And David, thank you for yours. I know uh, I can tell from a couple of quizzical looks out there, some of you are saying, you know, he just doesn't look the same as he does on television. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're right, of course. Coming here to a church, it just seemed like it wasn't right to bring my red horns. <laughs> Insurance reform legislation is about greater individual choice, it's about competition, it's about doing something about spiraling health insurance costs. It's about the number one cause in this country of personal bankruptcy, the number one cause in this country of credit card debt. It is about families who have good insurance coverage, good insurance coverage, who are not poor, who are working, who are providing well for themselves and consider themselves to be pretty well off, and yet they've seen their premiums double since 2000. And they know that the co-pays rise and the coverage shrinks, and it's about folks like Jeff, because they could be, any family could be one pink slip, one health care crisis away from having no protection whatsoever. Jeff, what a compelling story you have to tell us. And more than anything you came to hear me say today, I think it is the individual stories that we will hear today from Jeff and others that are so meaningful. They're similar to the stories I've heard the last several years working as a member of the Health Subcommittee and stories that I've tried to retell in our committee hearings and markups. Because we can talk about the numbers, we can get lost in the statistics, but this is about one human being facing a tragedy after another, after another, all the way across this country. And for too many Americans, like the estimated 20,000 people who died in 2006 because they did not have health insurance, it is a matter of life and death. Certainly, this is an economic issue. But as Reverend Gregory and our church surroundings remind us, it's also a very moral one. How can people of faith do nothing when the American Cancer Society tells us that a woman diagnosed today in Texas with breast cancer who has no health insurance is 60% more likely to die than one who has health insurance. I believe that we're here today together because we want to right these wrongs in our society. just say no, who say no way, who say never, who offer no solutions, I say what you tea baggers have to offer is mighty weak tea. <laughs> so much of your passion is directed not at provisions in this bill with which we disagree on a policy ground, it's about provisions that are simply not in this bill, that don't exist in it. <laughs> Doing nothing with so much suffering in a country as prosperous as ours is unconscionable. These disruptions, disruptions, I can tell you, have not altered for one minute my commitment. They've only strengthened my resolve. to be learned that they may be misguided in the leadership 
uh, that has spurred them on, that just refuses to accept that a presidential election didn't go their way, and that they could say anything and do anything to try to stop President Obama. they've uncovered some truths that we need to appreciate. They talk of the takeover, of rationing access to health care. They talk of deaf families denying necessary care to the elderly. They talk of a faceless bureaucrat obstructing a decision that should be between you and your doctor. I think these are real problems, not myths, but they're problems with our, not with our new health insurance legislation, no, each of these misdirected claims actually describe something that's wrong with health care in America. <laughs> the There's rationing today, but it's rationing done by Edna Insurance. that has brought 
so many of you out today is that something new. For many here who came and you've got employer-provided health care, you keep it, you keep your doctor, you've got Medicare, you keep the plan you've got now. But for the one in four of our neighbors here in Texas with no health insurance, for the 24,000 additional Texans who lost their coverage, uh, every, who lose their coverage every month, or the many who have insurance with the fine print taking away most of the exception, through the exceptions, most of what's in the policy, you'll finally be able to get access to a health insurance policy that will work for you through something called a health insurance exchange. That exchange is kind of a funny name for a marketplace. It's not very different than if you turn to a website to compare prices for airplane tickets. You're able to go there and look at the various policies that have to meet a minimum set standard so that it doesn't deny all your rights. And you can compare policies and see which one has the best premium for you, the best coverage for you. And for the first time, when the uninsured begin comparing those prices on private policies, they'll be able to compare them to a Medicare-type public plan. That's what It's, it's not something you have to do, it's something you can do. It's about more choice. It's about competition because in so many of these markets, there's only one dominant insurer out there. They don't have uh, any real competition. This can provide the competition. Uh, the, uh, the idea has been advanced as well. Maybe what we need to do is to have a co-op instead. <laughs> Washington. 
inspired by the example of public service of Senator Kennedy, but also inspired by you. That so many people here in this great room today and in our overflow crowd are here because you really care. Because you recognize that together we can make a difference. That your presence indicates we are not going to back down. With Together, now we can. Thank you. 